Good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about a, another uh, molecule of a drug. This is a one of the, the most commonly abused and used substances in the, uh, the United States, if not the uh, world. Uh, it's right up there uh, with ethanol. And this is the molecule that I'm going to use to be a representative of a group of molecules known as a cannabinoids. And cannabinoids, of course, come from uh, the uh, cannabis, uh, marijuana, uh, the, uh, marijuana being one of the most common ways of um, people uh, used to expose themselves to this. And the, the particular molecule that you're looking at here, this is... Um, Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or uh, THC. Um, the cannabinoids, they, these are uh, molecules that all have this pretty similar structure. All the cannabinoids are, are roughly uh, the, the same structurally. It, it is a kind of a tricyclic, tricyclic arrangement of um, three rings. I have a ring right here. I have a ring right here. I have a ring right here. I have a long carbon tail here. I've got a methyl group here and then two methyl groups here. Um, of particular noteworthiness in the cannabinoids is this little guy here. This is a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group sticking off of it. This is called a phenol or a phenolic um, group um, when you have a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group. Um, it is thought that this site it, it tends to be the uh, active uh, primary active component of this entire molecule um, that interacts with uh, what are known as the cannabinoid receptors, and we'll talk about those here in just a minute. Um, so the the interesting uh, the, the naming these is rather interesting. This is delta nine tetrahydrocarbon uh, cannabinol, excuse me, um, delta nine THC, and and the reason that this has the delta nine is if you look at this ring right here, and maybe I'll move this in a little bit here. If you look at this ring right here, this is um, the number nine carbon, and I have a double covalent bond coming off of this number number nine carbon. Um, there is another form of THC known as delta eight tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, where um, the double bond comes off of the eighth carbon right here, and we would call that delta eight as opposed to uh, delta 9. So that's just a little bit, a little note about the uh, structure. Okay, so if you look at this molecule, um, you do have an oxygen here and a hydroxyl group here, which does add some polarity to it. But by and large, this is a very nonpolar molecule. You have long carbon-hydrogen chains here. We have um, lots of methyl groups here, all of which make this a very um, uh, lipophilic molecule. Um, so when uh, this molecule is um, typically um, smoked, um, there are other ways. It can be eaten, ingested, ingested as well, and um, there are more synthetic uh, cannabinoids that can be um, taken in, uh, via other routes. Um, it, it distributes throughout the body rather quickly. It can penetrate lipid membranes very easily and can get into the central nervous system, but because it's so lipophilic and it it um, it's able to uh, diffuse out uh, throughout the the central body compartment so well and into the peripheral tissues. Only only one, only a couple percent of it will actually uh, sequester in the central uh, nervous system. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the um, receptor basis for which this works. The cannabinoids do appear to be ligands for a two. Uh, specific types of receptors, which are known as the cannabinoid receptors. Um, there are CB1 and CB2 receptors uh, that this particular molecule can act as a ligand uh, to. And I'll talk about those receptors in the next video. I'm going to cut it off here. Um, as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.